Good evening. Welcome to our September board meeting. Pam, would you please note that everyone is present? Mr. Panko, I know you visit us every uh, so many months or so, but would you mind leading us in the, in the pledge? Right here at the podium. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 1.4, approval of minutes. Move to approve. Second. Second. Item 1.6, open. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Oh, Robles. Pam? Question, please. <laughs> Mrs. Robles. Aye. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Fierro. Aye. Item 1.6, open forum. Uh, Pam, is any, anybody here? To, no? Uh, anybody here to speak under open forum? Once, twice, nope, okay. Pam? Item 1.7, presentations by individuals, groups, and organizations. Item 1.7.1, Dean Tony Badillo will give a presentation to the Board of Trustees regarding early college high schools. Welcome, Dean. Good evening. Dr. Serrata, Chair Fierro, Board members, good evening. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here today to update you on our early college high school program and our initiative. Uh, we um, are very excited to have, as you can see on the first two rows, uh, some guests uh, that we will identify as we continue with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So as you know, uh, the Early College High School Initiative, we, we started, and some, some of the board members remember, back in 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at the time, the topic of equity perhaps was not in the forefront as it is today, but that's exactly what the Early College High School Initiative is, is providing that additional support for students who are underrepresented in higher education and who will have the opportunity to earn an associate degree while in high school. Uh, schools, as you know, are designated by the Texas Education Agency, TEA, and have to apply following a very specific blueprint. Um, actually, that has given us the opportunity to come before you and update you because one of the requirements of the designation is to give a presentation to the school boards but also to the higher education uh, partners. Uh, we have three different types models of early college high schools on a college campus, which were our initial early colleges, uh, standalone early college high schools, and uh, now, more popular, the school within a school model. Uh, we have, we're very proud to have 74% of the students in early college high schools graduate with an associate degree before high school graduation. And that is surprising because the national average is 25%. So we are way above the national average. And we currently have 12 early college high schools. Uh, a little bit about enrollment, and as you can see that graph, we have been enrolling more and more students. Uh, we currently, well, for the last academic year, we had 3,118 students, although we started back uh, in 2007 with 126. Um, and uh, right now, our early college high school enrollment is about a third of our dual credit enrollment of 8,608 students. 
And this is even more exciting. So to date, 2,736 students have graduated with an associate's degree through the Early College High School uh, program. And this is, uh, of course, something that we all should be very proud of because this is, of course, uh, a, a group effort, a team, a team effort. And by the way, this graduation numbers are only for seven of our 12 schools that currently have graduates. We still have four schools that don't quite have uh, uh, graduates yet because of the cohort uh, uh, when, they, when they opened. Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about the partnerships. I'm going to try to be brief, but of course this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, so um, I could speak about this for a long time, but I'll try to make it brief. Um, in chronological order, our, uh, our first uh, early college high school, Mission Early College High School, uh, which um, is on our Mission Del Paso campus in partnership with Socorro Independent School District. And here with us today is uh, Principal Veronica Reyes, and Dean Villalobos, he is the administrative liaison for uh, Mission um, uh, Early College High School. <laughs> Dean Villalobos is going to get tired of standing up because he is a liaison for three schools. <laughs> um, so as you know, the school opened <coughs> in fall 2006, and uh, many of us remember that picture, who are the very first 23 students who graduated early, much to our surprise, uh, in um, uh, the first uh, graduating class in 2009. Uh, so to date, 910 Mission Early College High School students have graduated with an associate's before uh, high school graduation. I have told uh, Dr. Espinosa and Ms. Reyes, this year, they're going to hit the thousandth graduate, which is really amazing. Um, our second is Valle Verde Early College High School, located on our Valle Verde campus, in partnership with Isleta Independent School District. And Principal Paul Covey is here with us. <laughs> and also Dr. Maya, who is the administrative liaison. So Valle Verde Early College High School opened in 2007, and uh, to date, they have graduated 545 students with an associates. But not only that, they were at National Blue Ribbon School last year, 2017, and a designated demonstration site by TEA. So other schools that are planning on opening early college high schools come to visit Valle Verde Early College High School. Uh, very excited. And of course, there we have Dr. Covey. Uh, then the next year, which was uh, 2008, we had two schools opening that year, if you remember. Uh, Northwest uh, Early College High School, located on our Northwest campus in partnership with Kennedy Independent School District. And Ms. Tracy Speaker is the principal who could not be here today, but Ms. Jessica Harrison, Dean of Students, is here to represent. Is he ready to be student, Kevin? And, yeah, of course, the designated liaison is Dr. Tenna. So they are the 2018 National Blue Ribbon School nominee, and I think we have it in good authority that they might receive very good news in November, but we'll update you on that uh, then. Uh, today, 291 students have graduated with an associate's. Uh, same year, 2008, I believe in the afternoon, we opened uh, Trans Mountain Early College High School on the Trans Mountain campus in partnership with El Paso Independent School District. And Ms. Barbara Brinkley Lopez, who is a principal, is here with us. <laughs> and Dean Webb is uh, the administrative liaison. I don't think I saw him coming in, but he does a fantastic job in, partnering, uh, in partnership with uh, Ms. Brinkley Lopez. Um, again, very special school because they're also a TSTEM Academy and most of their students graduate with an Associate of Science uh, degree and they have had today 524 students graduating with an Associates. Um, our first standalone school is Cotton Valley Early College High School uh, in partnership with Fabian's Independent School District and Dr. Hogue is here with us. And 
Celestine Villalobos, who is the administrative liaison. Um, in its ninth year operation, we have graduated 168 students uh, with an associate's degree. Uh, Clint ISD Early College Academy is another standalone school uh, in partnership with Clint Independent School District. And Mr. Martinez, Edmund Martinez, is here with us. <laughs> and uh, also Tina Maya, who is the liaison. Uh, so to date, graduated 233 students. Uh, and if you have not been to Clint um, Early College Academy, beautiful campus, and um, I will mention them again a little bit later in my presentation again uh, with some news. Um, then we have our first school within school, uh, Burgess Early College High School, uh, in partnership with El Paso Independent School District. And we have uh, Dr. Woods here, the principal of the school, and Ms. Laura Carrera, the assistant principal and administrative uh, responsible. And they work closely with Dean Primusic, who is the administrative liaison. Uh, in his fifth year of operation, they had their first graduating class just this spring, and they have graduated 65 students with an associate's degree. Uh, then we have Socorro Early College, uh, also school within school, in partnership, of course, with Socorro Independent School District, uh, Principal Tovar, and we have here Ms. Diane Duncan, who is the director. <laughs> in his fourth year operation, so we should have, uh, again, uh, I understand three early graduates this December who will walk uh, the stage at Bob Dunn Haskins and of course the official first graduating class in next spring. Then we have Rams Early College, uh, uh, school within school also with the Socorro Independent School District and Principal Carlos Guerra, but Mr. Orlando Hurston is the administrator in charge and he's here with us. <laughs> and the liaison is Dean Rodarte. Um, again, they don't have graduates yet, but next year we, we need to wait. Uh, Dr. Graham, I think that's your picture. Uh, then we have Parkland Early College High School, also school within the school, in partnership with Islet Independent School District. Uh, Ms. Penelope Bankston is the principal, and Ruben Alarcon is the assistant principal who is here with us. <laughs> Dean Evler uh, works closely with him for this. Second year operation. I haven't seen Dean Edler. Uh, so if you remember, we had three schools. Uh, remember, fall uh, of 2017 was a very busy semester. So we had Parkland Early College, and we also had Trey Blair's Early College High School uh, in partnership with Socorro Independent School District. Uh, Ms. Cuevas is the principal, and Mr. Sandoval is here with us. Also, uh, Dean Villalobos is the administrative liaison. And, and last but not least, Isleta High School Early College Academy, school within school with Isleta School District. Ms. Rendon is the principal, and Mr. Philip Hash is uh, the assistant principal here with us. And I have the pleasure of being their administrative liaison. Also, Thank you very much. Um, so what's next? So we are currently in the planning year for three early college high schools, all three with the Socorro Independent School District, Aztec Early College with El Dorado High School, inside El Dorado High School, Falcon Early College in East Lake, and Pebble Hills Early College, of course, in Pebble Hills, opening fall 2019. So be ready because we will have once again, three new schools and three new openings uh, next year. Some great news. Um, as, as you already know, uh, we had a SAC COC site visit to look specifically at dual credit. And uh, as Dr. Serata shared uh, not long ago, 
no recommendation. So that's definitely music to our ears. They found that our program is very um, doing everything right, and we're in very good shape. Uh, and I was mentioning Clint uh, Early College Academy. That was one of the schools that was visited, and they were very, very impressed with uh, Mr. Martinez, his team, and the students at the Early College Academy. So thank you so much. And also, uh, the dual credit Early College High School program at El Paso Community College has been uh, uh, nominated as a finalist, has been named as a finalist uh, in the um, uh, Excellence in Education uh, Prize. This is, a, this is a national organization, so we shall find out in October if we, if we have uh, earned that recognition. But of course, we are very recognized as an example of Excellencia, and this is an organization that highlights the work of Latinos in education, in higher education. Um, just sharing with you, uh, we have on October 20th, our fifth annual Building Bridges uh, Dual Credit Conference. Uh, this is an opportunity to bring all of our stakeholders, all our dual credit and early college high school stakeholders to one place. Uh, and uh, looking forward to that event in October. For more information on our programs, we have our webpage, epcc.edu slash dual credit, or of course, Early College High School for more information uh, for our audience here in present or anybody else who is watching and is interested in our dual credit and Early College High School program. And now a big thank you to our Early College High School team. Uh, so you uh, were kind enough to understand that we were growing so much. So my office was created two years ago. I'm starting my third year as Dean of Dual Credit in Early College High Schools. And I want to recognize my office staff, Olaya Casares, uh, Esperanza Gomez, and Marisol Negrete, who, by the way, is here in the audience. Marisol? She has been uh, tremendous team. They have been fantastic and, and helping in pulling all this together. We needed a centralized office for this fantastic effort. Uh, also, we have our early college high school counseling team led by uh, Rene Chavez, who is our counseling coordinator. But all of those people that you see there are EPCC counselors assigned to work with a high school counselor and make sure that students complete uh, their, their degrees in time. And of course, our dual credit high school and early college high school um, admissions and registration uh, office led by Mr. Carlos Gonzalez. Carlos? Did I see Carlos? Yeah. He, he also has a fantastic team, uh, his office staff, Griselda and Leslie, and five fantastic uh, enrollment specialists that assist um, in enrolling students. So again, this is a team effort. There's many other people who uh, could be mentioned in this effort, but I just wanted to um, update you and answer any questions if you have any. Dean, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, could I ask you to send it to Pam so she could forward it to the board members? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank no, you. Th thank you. Pam, would you mind moving to item 1.9.1? Item 1.9, Board of Trustees business. Item 1.9.1, the Board of Trustees will deliberate on agreeing to a minor boundary modification application to foreign trade zone number 68 to include facilities to be occupied by the Woodbridge Group and Broker Logistics and to delete an identified site which is no longer suitable for use in foreign trade zone number 68. Okay, motion to approve. So move. Any questions? Yeah, what is what are you what are we doing here? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. We have we have a, a motion and second. We're on, on discussion. Could you give us a brief overview? Sure. Um, the, the foreign trade zone boundaries that we have in the county and city of El Paso are virtual. So there's a process to move them to where we need them the most. And so what we're asking is a, it's a minor boundary modification for two different businesses. These are two separate minor boundary modifications. So we take 
um, parcels that have been designated in the past as boundaries where we don't see any future usage for foreign trade zone operation and we move them to companies that would like to be in the foreign trade zone program so that we can bring them into the program. Um, one of them is Woodbridge Industries out in Northeast El Paso. Another one is Brokers Logistics, which is over here on Hawkins. And what they're going to do is they're going to be able to grow the business and add more jobs and by being able to take advantage of the foreign trade zone program. And so this is uh, something that we ask each of the taxing entities, the county, the El Paso Community College, the school district, to give us a letter of support saying we support this movement of the boundaries because it helps with the economy of, of the area. And then with that, we can go to the Washington, D.C., to the Department of U.S. Commerce with our application and say we have the community support to do this. Please allow us to do this. And so this is a very big step in reaching that that goal. Nobody else has come forward to oppose it? Um, no, no one ever opposes these because uh, when you look at, it, when you go in a foreign trade zone, um, ad valorem taxes on inventory is not collected. The property taxes, the equipment taxes, the furniture and fixture taxes are still collected. Mm -hmm. And because we're in the Texas Freeport Act, any inventory coming into any building that moves out of Texas within 175 days is never taxed for inventory at Valorum. And so almost every company that works in the foreign trade zone program, they're moving inventory out in and out within about five days. So as far as a, a, a impact on any tax reduction, there's not one. But the good thing is there's, there's an opposite effect is um, Woodbridge is gonna add 40 new employees. They're growing the business here. Um, Broker's Warehouse is going to be add another five or ten employees. So, when you look at that, that becomes more sales tax, more property tax. They're buying houses, and so it's a real good economic benefit to be able to do this type of process. We have a motion, second. Any other questions? Pam, we're ready. I have Thank a you. question. Oh yes. yes. I, I just have a question <coughs> for you, sir. Is there any? So these are businesses that would be bringing in new jobs. Yes. To the community. Yes. Is there any opportunity that you know of or could help um, negotiate to give us some kind of apprenticeship programs for students? Um, I am sure that a lot of these businesses would love to create apprentices, apprenticeships um, for students. And uh, I know that I'm already working with part of the group here at the community college on trying to develop logistics curriculum mm -hmm. um, that meets the needs of a lot of logistics companies that are here in El Paso too. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because we're ag aggressively pursuing internships, both paid and, and unpaid or mm -hmm. opportunities for our students that are having to work and go to school at the same time. Um, so, if, you know, I don't have a problem with us approving these kinds of initiatives but I see that there's an opportunity to maybe engage people like yourself who are at the forefront of these businesses. Oh and, sure, and yes, I would definitely like to advocate for that with all of our clients and, and even share some of the contact information we have because you. some of the companies that we do have in the foreign trade zone program now are like Bosch, VF Jeans, mm -hmm. um, some really large companies, Cardinal Health, and so there's some really good opportunities to go after for trying to do an apprentice. Okay, if you don't mind sharing the information with Dr. Serrata of who sure, he can that. lead you to the contact, and we appreciate your assistance with Absolutely, that. Thank you. you bet. Dr. Graham, I'll do better. I'll give you his card, and that way you can stalk him. <laughs> uh, make a motion to approve. We have a motion second. Any other questions? Thank you again for being here. Thank Pam, you very much. We're ready. Mrs. Robles. Aye. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Fierro. Aye. Do you want like to go back to 1.7? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Pam. Item 1.7.2. The Foundation for EPCC will present updates regarding $270,000 for scholarships to be distributed to the College for Academic Year 2018-2019 
and to recognize scholarship funding partners, Wells Fargo, donor for dual credit early college high school en enrollment initiative, Dr. Blanca Campa, EPCC educational psychology professor for establishing a $25,000 endowment, the Professor Blanca Campa Resilience Fund to support students who have overcome obstacles and life challenges. Good evening, welcome. Good evening, Dr. Chair Fierro, Board of Trustees, Dr. Serata, staff, faculty, and guests. Nice to see you this evening. And the Foundation for El Paso Community College is very pleased to be here to share some recent news with you and to thank some very generous donors. Uh, so with that, let me introduce Ms. Patricia Marcus, Vice President at Wells Fargo Bank and uh, Vice Chair of the Foundation Board. Good evening, everybody. So let's share some, some good information on the foundation, how we've been able to support uh, El Paso Community College students. So EPCC, oops, let's see. Getting ahead of myself, the next, all right. So EPCC Foundation Scholars had a 57% graduation rate in three years or less for first-time students uh, between the, the years of 2014 and 2017. Uh, fall 2010 through the summer of 2018, over 1,000 students completed their uh, degrees and certificates with a student GPA of 3.0. Uh, 1,628 students have received foundation scholarships since 2010. Total foundation scholarships amount awarded to EPCC students uh, have been right under $2.3 million. Uh, this year for the 2018-2019 scholarships, the foundation has made more than 265,000 available for student scholarships for this academic year. Uh, we also have new funding from Wells Fargo of 20000 and uh, from the electric company we have 7500 I, I would thank myself on the next, but it is really Wells Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we're very pleased to share some thank yous. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank Wells Fargo and, and Ms. Patricia Marcus for their support for what we are calling Finish Line Scholarships. Uh, this is a strategic initiative. The foundation board is trying to do some strategic targeted funding to address the college's goals. These finish line scholarships are to help students complete their certificates and degrees. And uh, so with $20,000, um, we are focusing in on that. Last year, Wells Fargo helped us uh, work on an enrollment initiative targeting dual credit students who had completed dual credit uh, hours, 12 credit hours or more in high schools. And that was uh, an enrollment initiative to get those students to enroll at El Paso Community College and complete degrees here with us. Um, so we want to thank Wells Fargo for their support for El Paso Community College and uh, present you this plaque. Next, we're very pleased to share one of our own and thank Dr. Blanca Campa, EPCC faculty member who has established an endowment fund um, at the foundation in support of students. The Dr. Pl excuse me, the Dr. Blanca Campa Resilience Fund um, is focusing on helping students who have overcome life obstacles and challenges. Uh, many of these students are returning students. Many of them have overcome economic disadvantages or other life challenges, uh, returned to school, and are succeeding. And Dr. Campa wants to help them 
um, continue to succeed with her support. This is out of her own personal funds, and uh, you'll see on the slide and in my hand, uh, her book, The Mexican American Community College Experience. Uh, if you've not read it, it's a really special book that shares her passion for students, her commitment to being a student advocate, um, and really her um, passion for teaching students who have really um, struggled but succeeded. Um, Dr. Campo was recently a presenter at Lone Star College. She was invited to present for their Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. Um, she's known for um, her energy, her hands-on work with students, and uh, certainly her own resilience, and we're very happy to have her with us this evening and thank her, Dr. Campa. Please come forward and we'd love to get a photo with you. Actually, I just want to say um, thank you and, um, and I'm just very proud to represent El Paso Community College. Um, I am a graduate of El Paso Community College and so I had an opportunity to go to Lone Star and tell them how fantastic we are. And uh, I also want to mention that Dr. Serata did write the forward for oh. the book, so really appreciate that. And so I just want to say thank you, and this is an honor. Thank no, you. Dr. Campa, thank you. <laughs> Dr. Serata, would you mind um, ordering a book for each of the board members? Yes, sir. Please. We will get it done. I'm sure Dr. Campa will sign them. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much, and we're looking forward to reading your book. And last, we'd like to thank Dr. Sadat on the Board of Trustees and, and all the college faculty and staff for your support these past three years. Next week, the, the College Foundation's annual fundraiser, Fajitas and Margaritas for Scholarships, is coming up. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, we promise you a nice evening of good food and, and good fellowship uh, with your colleagues and community members. And uh, as you know, this is a cook-off between four teams of culinary students uh, with their faculty chefs uh, cooking up specialty fajitas and, and uh, specialty margarita pairings. Uh, this year we also have local artists, very well known, um, regionally acclaimed and statewide acclaimed artist, Alberto Escamilla with us. He has donated a painting from his personal collection um, and that will be on the silent auction. And uh, we also have a number of really beautiful silent auction items and uh, some really nice trips, some beautiful door prizes and uh, a lot of neat surprises. And we will also uh, recognize a couple of student scholarship recipients this year at the event. So we hope that you can be with us this coming Thursday evening. And uh, it'll be from 6 to 8 p.m. in the ASCB building. And uh, we know that our students uh, will be bringing their best and they look forward to showing you their talents. Thank you. Thank you so much. Item 1.7.3, optional presentations will be made by the presidents of the Classified Staff Association, the Professional Staff Association, the Faculty Association, and the Student Government Association. Hey, good evening. We missed you last month. Hi. Sorry. Sorry I couldn't be here. Uh, good afternoon. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Brian Menon. I will be serving as this year's SGA president. And here with me are a couple of members of my incredible team. To my right is... Vice President Alex Rodriguez. Welcome, Alex. And, uh, <laughs> and to my left is Canvas Representative Amy Solis. So uh, to start off the year, we uh, develop a, a, a strategy for get out the vote. Uh, it's super important for the student body to be uh, civically engaged. And so what we're doing is uh, we incorporated voter registration into new student orientation. Uh, so we got that going. Uh, we're also organizing six debates for candidates running for office. 
uh, one of which is happening this Tuesday, uh, September 24th or 25th. Uh, so we got that in the works. Uh, we've also been presenting in classrooms to talk about voter education. We've also been registering students to vote. And so, uh, but voter registration is only half the challenge. The other challenge is voter turnout. And so we also have some initiatives in the works for increasing voter turnout. Uh, we're hosting fun events at polling locations during, during early voting. And we're also booking TJ to rally students to the polls during early voting, so that should be exciting. Uh, so we're hopeful and we're confident that these efforts will make a, a little bit of a difference. Also on more somber news, about a month ago, a former SGA member passed away. Her name was Charisma James. Uh, she was a mom, she was a student leader, but most importantly, she was a friend. And so uh, she passed away in a very heroic manner. Uh, she did, um, you know, shield her two children and their friend from a car accident. And so in order to commemorate her legacy, we are, we are, the SGA Senate did vote to establish a $25,000 endowment for the foundation. And so once it accumulates interest, hopefully we can start awarding scholarships for student veterans. Uh, we also voted to start a yearly scholarship, a $1,000 scholarship or maybe two $500 scholarships, which we will award during the spring. And we're also considering renaming the Veterans Resource Center in our name. Uh, of course, that will require more uh, approval by college officials. And uh, so, as the official voice of the student body, it is our responsibility to advocate for the students uh, when it comes to day-to-day -day operations, which encompasses college policies. Uh, one policy that student organizations and faculty advisors have uh, expressed concerns with is college procedure 4100710, student travel. It's, it's the same policy that seven students and one professor came to speak about in the April Board of Trustees meeting. Um, we, be, we did become aware of the revisions for this policy, uh, which actually reduced the limit. And so uh, because of that, uh, student organizations and faculty advisors cannot travel to conferences in Washington, D.C. and Austin, Texas, which is the capital, the capital of our state. And I guess that's one of the cons of being in El Paso is that everything is so far away. Dallas is like 600 miles away. And so, uh, you know, and we understand the risk of liability. We completely understand that, but we just don't feel that the this fear of a liability should put a stranglehold on common sense. Uh, so we understand that, Midland College understands that, and so does UTEP. And they also have legal teams who look at these kinds of things. So we just don't understand why our travel policy is so restrictive. And so uh, we did speak with President Serata yesterday. Uh, we did bring up our concerns. We did, uh, you know, we did let him know that we did do research. We, we have looked at other policies. And so, uh, and from what I can recall, Dr. S President Serata did agree with us. Uh, you know, it would be reasonable to extend this limit to, for it to be 600 miles so students can at least get to Austin for statewide conferences because they always happen in Austin, in Houston, but unfortunately it's very far away. So, um, so Joe Gebbia, which is the founder of Air, Airbnb, he said, in general, we believe in regulation just as long as it is fair and balanced. And so we're hoping that we can work on something for this policy. And so our overall goal for this year is to innovate SGA. And by that I mean um, in, order, in order to make it more effective. And so we are in the process of changing our logo. Uh, I know it's been the same logo for the past, I don't know, a couple decades. So we are changing our logo. Hopefully it's gonna look much nicer. Uh, we are expanding our social media presence. We're working on getting up those Facebook likes. We're getting more likes on, uh, more followers on Instagram. So. Uh, which is good, so we can raise awareness on events, we can uh, ex expand our influence to the student body. Um, we're also implementing practices that ensure uh, productivity, like requiring all officers to do special projects so we can remain productive, visible, and active. And uh, so last off, we're all members of this community. Um, I really hope that we all work together to, qu to move forward. And uh, if, you guys, uh, if you guys ever need anything from SGA, we're always here. Uh, do you all have any questions or requests for student government? No, I, I want to just thank you for your leadership and we look forward to working with you this year. Dr. So, Graham? Well, the same thing, you know, thank you for the work that you do and I just wonder, um, I think it was a few months ago that I posed the question if, if you're doing anything to help with the recruitment of students because that would be an initiative that the board would certainly be in support of mm -hmm. as well as the administration and that's where we need help with the recruitment of students. Yes, so enrollment is super important. That's how we get some of those dollars. And so uh, we ha in the past we have gone to elementary schools to present during college day. So uh, uh, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, we talk about El Paso Community College and SGA. And so uh, that's also another thing for student ambassadors. 
So as SGA, we, uh, we focus on the internal aspect, but we can also focus on the external aspect, but we'd be more than happy to keep on doing that to increase enrollment. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for your time. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you. you very much. Good evening to our board of trustees, Chairman Fierro, Dr. Serrata, staff and guests. Uh, my name is Laura Gaither and I am president of the classified staff. I'm here to introduce our new council. Uh, with me are only four members. The other ones had previous arrangements, previous, uh, I'm sorry, previous engagements. <laughs> um, Jesse Arellano is our public relations. <laughs> Uh, Cecilia Montoya is our secretary. Laura Estrada is our treasurer. Cynthia Arras. She's here at ASC for our rights and responsibilities. Uh, Elvira Fernandez is also here at ASC. Kim McBroom is at Northwest. Roberta Rodriguez at Rio Grande. Leticia Montoya at Trans Mountain. Jennifer Campbell at BB. And Barbara Moreno also at Valle Verde. Uh, Marisol Negrete is here at ASC, our Vice President. Uh, Cynthia Cabariti is our Vice President at Mission. Uh, Eva Rangel is at Rio Grande. Rosy Pulido is at Trans Mountain. Norma Salas is at Valle Verde. And our be on, our, on our behalf, we thank you for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good luck. Beautiful afternoon, Dr. Serrata, board members and attendees. My name is Carmen Wages, and I am the newly elected Professional Staff Association President. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I would like to introduce Cheryl Bowman. Uh, she's our treasurer, uh, who's also our new uh, Rights and Responsibilities Chair, and also happens to be our PSA Employee of the Year of 20, for 2018. Congratulations. Our Vice President, Arlena Laracon, was unable to be with us uh, this evening. Um, we would also like to send a big thank you to Dean Rick Webb for his continued support uh, to the PSA activities, uh, especially during our transition. Uh, we also want to express our thanks to all those who are supporting the PSA officers, especially Ms. Josette Shaughnessy, Mr. Fernie Flores, uh, Dr. Jenny Hidon, and uh, Ms. Carrie Moe, and of course, uh, Dr. Dolores Gross. And we look forward to working with Dr. Serrata and all of our administrators in the coming year, and also with the other constituency groups. Thank you very much. Good evening, welcome. Good evening, thank you so much. It is my pleasure to introduce my new <coughs> vice president for adjuncts tonight. Uh, Ms. Melissa Aguilera has taken on expanded positions within the college and as a result, we welcome Mr. Robert Moreno to serve out the remainder of the two-year term. So I invited him to come tonight and introduce himself to you. Congratulations, Ron. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, my name is Robert Moreno. I teach chemistry at Northwest. Uh, I've been with the college for about seven years now. Um, I really look forward to an opportunity to work towards some goals that are important to me as an adjunct instructor, namely providing um, the adjunct population access to certain things that are not available to them as adjuncts, such as the ability to attend professional development events and participate with administration and leadership. I feel that creating a more equitable environment <coughs> for the adjunct faculty with respect to a, their full-time and part-time colleagues will go a great way to improving the, the relationship they have with the college. 
adjuncts, um, despite a uh, popular misconception, are not, by and large, people who are working a second job to get some extra money. A lot of them, myself included, are working very hard to develop a career at this college. And I feel that they are very dedicated to the school, to its goals, and to the students. And by providing them greater opportunities to succeed and greater opportunities to develop their career with the college, I believe that this institution will be the ultimate beneficiary to any uh, actions there for. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Item, item 1.8, communications, none. Item 1.10, board reports, treasurer's report, none. Item 1.10.2, president's report. Item 1.10.2.1, Dr. William Sadat that will update the board of trustees and audience on recent <coughs> events that have transpired at the college. Chair Farrell, members of the board, um, a quick report. I uh, wanted just to brief the board on uh, some items that we've uh, embarked on at the institution, and many that you were already privy to. The Northwest Campus held its groundbreaking ceremony on Thursday, August the 30th. Uh, this was the last of the six groundbreaking events that we held throughout the district as part of the new construction for the college's master plan. Many thanks to all the board members who were able to attend. Um, you heard Dean Badillo speak to it, but it is a big deal. I want to address it one more time. The SAC COC visiting team was in El Paso on September 4th through the 6th, right after Labor Day, visiting several of our dual credit sites. I am very happy to report that there were no recommendations or findings, as you heard from Dean Badillo. A big kudos and congratulations to Dean Badillo, to Dr. Julie Penley, the Vice President for Research, Accreditation, and Planning, uh, and to both of their respective staffs and our partners at the districts for all the preparation that went into ensuring a successful visit. Uh, it is a reflection of the great work that the college and our partners do together. El Paso Community College was designated a National Center for Academic Excellence in Cyber Defense, two-year education through the academic year 2023. Professor Tony Vargas is the uh, CAE CD 2Y contact person for El Paso Community College. Uh, Tony, along with the IT and uh, computer science faculty, worked very hard over the past year to submit all the documentation in May. Thank you to all who supported this effort, which include Dr. Hiron, our VP for Information Technology and CIO, and her team, Melissa Sanchez from the Children's College Interim Director, the faculty who use cybersecurity in their classes, Soraya Hajar, uh, who input on how security, cybersecurity is handled in the health fields, and our dual credit partners in Socorro ISD in particular. Congratulations, Professor Tony Vargas and the ITCOSC faculty, and Dr. Maisha Pagel, our education and CTE dean. A formal ceremony to present the CAE certificate will be held in June 2019, and the location will be determined. Dr. Paula Mitchell was reelected as Vice Commander-in-Chief for the Military Order of World Wars at the National Convention that was held in Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, last month. This is Dr. Mitchell's third term. Congratulations. So, yes, absolutely. Congratulations to Dr. Mitchell, who's serving as our Interim of Associate Vice President for Instruction and Student Success and the Dean of Health, Career, and Technical Education, Math and Science Division. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. And finally, the NJCAA Division I cross-country season is well underway, and the season off is off to a promising start. Last Wednesday, the U.S. Track and Field and Cross-Country Coaches Association, it's a very long acronym, I'll just leave it at that, <laughs> released the week one of the men's and women's national coaches poll. El Paso Community College Tejanas became the second nationally ranked team with four first place votes after the group finished second overall at the Laurie Fitzgerald Classic. The Tejanos claimed the number four national spot after claiming the team title at the Laurie Fitzgerald Classic. Both men and women beat out teams from Western New Mexico, New Mexico State, and UTEP. This is significant because this is the first time in EPCC history that both teams are ranked in the top five nationally. Congratulations to the Tejanos and Tejanas for their hard work and dedication. Kudos to Athletic Director and Coach Felix Enojosa and his team for the leadership. Dr. Ken Gonzalez and his team as well. We wish the team continued success. As the senior student continues, no pressure, Coach. 
That concludes my report, Chair. Thank you so much, Dr. Serrata. Mr. Fierro. Yes, Dr. Graham? Dr. Serrata left out one event. Oh. I he, left the Walk for Success. He was a guest yes. at the Walk for Success at Socorro ISD. And along with the superintendent, he went knocking on doors. And I think we recovered about 30 students. Well, congratulations. In yes. Including the two that Dr. Espinosa and Principal Tovar from Socorro High School went and spoke to. Both of those young men went back to Principal Tovar's office on Monday, as they had promised to do. And they're both re-enrolled. So it was a great event. Thank you for having me, Dr. Graham. So Hopefully we'll do something similar, maybe not walk all over the city, but that we could try and bring back some of our students that have not completed and have left, but we need them back. You should email Dr. Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> that would be a great event. But thank you for joining us, Dr. My pleasure, Serrata. Dr. Graham. Thank you for having me. Item 1.11, consent docket, includes item 3.2. Move to, move to adopt. Second. Questions? Mrs. Robles. Aye. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Fierro. Aye. Item 2.0, administration, none. Item 3.0, personnel. Item 3.1, full-time institutionally funded actions. Motion to approve. Second. Questions? Pam? Mrs. Robles. Aye. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Fierro. Aye. Item 3.3, information items, no action is required. Item 4.0, financial services, there are none, no items. Item 5.1, consideration and deliberation on the approval to award a contract to Rio Grande Contract Furnishings Incorporated doing business mm -hmm. as BPSI for the purchase and installation of furniture for the upcoming Via Verde Training and Transportation Center in the amount of $174,500. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any questions? None? Okay, we're ready, Pam. Mrs. Ropas. Aye. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Fierro. Aye. Item 6.1, consideration and deliberation on the acceptance of a grant award from the Texas Workforce Commission for Classic in Industries Incorporated doing business as Technomark in the amount of $209,312. Move to approve items 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3. Second. Item 6.2. Consideration and deliberation on the acceptance of a grant award from the Texas Workforce Commission to provide training from Delphingen, Delphingen U.S. Incorporated in the amount of $93,338. Item 6.3, consideration and deliberation on the acceptance of a grant award from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board for College Readiness and Success Models for 60 by 30 Texas, CRSM 2018, in the amount of $75,000. Any questions? Uh, Chair, I would just like to give kudos to um, Vice President Steve Smith. I know he's not here, Dr. but oh, Dr. Mitchell, if you could please pass that uh, along. It's fantastic that we're seeing so many grants, um, especially I uh, like the item 6.3 with the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board for the 60 by 30, so very important. So good job. Mrs. Robles. Aye. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Fierro. Aye. Item 7.1.
consideration and deliberation on the approval of continuing education tuition rates for new courses. Moved to approve 7.1, 7.2. Second. <laughs> Item 7.2, consideration and deliberation on the approval of continuing education tuition rates for revised courses. Okay. Questions? Okay, Pam, we're ready. Mrs. Robles. Aye. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Fierro. Aye. Pam, could you please? Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen. All right. Um, I believe that's the agenda, correct? That is correct. Would you please note that our next board meeting will be held on October 15th at 5.30? And fin facilities, facilities and finance will, uh, will be previews at 4, 4, 4 p.m. Okay, with that, I make so a motion to adjourn. So 4 p.m.? Yeah, 4 p.m. Yes. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.